Okay, so in this talk, we are going to talk about a test which can we can use to determine whether certain kinds of series and certain kinds of integrals converge. And this actually is it's it's not a any, it's not a basic test. It sort of follows from other things, but we just stating it because it's a quick way of calculating some things. So, so I've, I've written four types of things here. Okay, uh, the first is is an integral of p x over q. So p and q are both polynomials. Q is non-zero or whatever you want it to be. So in this case, we are integrating a function, rational function, from x naught to infinity, and we are assuming that the uh, denominator is non-zero for x greater than equal to x naught, so that this integration makes sense. The second one is you are doing a summation, so it's very similar to the integration, except you are summing up only over integers, starting from k naught and going up to infinity. And again, you'll assume that the denominator is not zero at any of the integers from k naught onward. Uh, the third is is sort of like this integration, except what have we done? Hmm? We add a trigonometric function. We multiply by sine x, and what the sine x does essentially it creates some kind of oscillation in your function, right? The rational function itself is just a plain thing, and now you multiply by sine x, and this keeps oscillating between minus one and one. And the corresponding or, or corresponding similar thing with with functions with summations would be you do minus one to the k p k over q k. So this would have an alternation. Mm -hmm. So now what you want to do is you want to determine when these things converge. Okay. And since p and q are polynomials, we can take their degrees, we can take the difference of the degrees. So the rules are as follows. We have to look at the difference of the degrees. If this difference is greater than one, then what happens? Diver. Oh, Q minus P. Yeah. So that means that the denominator is not just bigger than the numerator in degree, but the degree difference is bigger than one. It'll converge. It will converge. So all four converge. Converge and they converge absolutely. Okay, so what that means is that, uh, well, all of them converge, but even if you replace each one by absolute values, it will still converge. Okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, okay, what, about, what is the next case? Zero less, than, okay, by the way, since you're actually working with polynomials, this actually means the degree, is a, degree difference is at least two, right? Because the degree difference is an integer. Mm -hmm. But the reason I've written it like this is because when we generalize a little later, We'll find that what really matters is that it's greater than one, not that it's greater than equal to two. Right? So I could have written this as just saying the degree difference is greater than equal to two, but in the general version, it's the greater than one, which is the right thing to write. So that's all written like that. The next one says the degree difference is at most one, but it's strictly bigger than zero. Okay. Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, now, if these are actually integers, which is what our case is, what does that mean? The degree difference is. One equal to one, mm -hmm. right? But but again, I'm writing it in a way which is easy to generalize. So um, so what happens in this case? The well, one and two diverge. I I'll, I'll give a quick explanation a moment later. Uh, three and four. Converge, but they converge conditionally. Conditionally. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that, well, uh, maybe you haven't seen conditional convergence of integrals. For summations, conditional convergence just means if you actually took the absolute values and added them up, it wouldn't actually converge. Okay, so it converges the way it's written, but the absolute value sum doesn't converge. It means if you rearrange it, maybe it doesn't converge, or maybe it converges something different. Okay, and what happens if the degree difference is less than equal to zero? It'll diverge. All of them diverge? Uh... Yes. Oh. 
Maybe now the, the, the last one. Well, they definitely don't converge. Uh, well, what happens is if if you if you have like the degree difference is exactly zero, it sort of there may, may be an oscillatory summation, but it definitely doesn't converge. Mm -hmm. So uh, so they all none of them converges. Okay, so now uh, now some people use the word diverge whenever something doesn't converge, but so so what I'm thinking of here is if P K and Q K are both one, so this is just the summation of minus one to the k. Then it's like minus one plus one minus one plus one. That summation just oscillates between minus one and uh, zero, and so that summation won't uh, converge. But maybe you won't want to say it diverges. So I'll just say none of them converges. Okay. So now, how do you actually show these? Well, the summation problems you can actually kind of convert to the integration problem by using the integral test. And the integration problem, essentially, you can again do a kind of basic comparison or limit comparison and convert it to just integrating uh, this function. Essentially, it's the question of when you try to when you try to integrate one over x to the degree q minus degree p. You can integrate this function from x not to infinity. So both one and two ultimately reduce to the question of whether this integral converges. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is this integral? So if you let's just give a name to this. So let's say r equals degree q minus degree p. This is x to the minus r dx. What is this? Well, what's the indefinite integral? Uh, indefinite integral. Mm -hmm. It is mm, one minus r x to the one minus r mm -hmm. over one minus r. Mm -hmm. Trying to evaluate from x not to infinity. Okay. Now, if r is uh, greater than one, what happens? Hmm. If r is greater than 1, then what does the limit go to as x goes to infinity? It goes to 0. goes to 0. And so it's just negative of the value at x now. So what will you get? Just uh, minus x naught to the 1 minus r over 1 minus r. Right, which is x naught to the 1 minus r over r minus 1. Okay, but the point is it's a finite number. We don't really care what it is. Because the value of the, this integral is not the same as the value. We just care that this converges if and only if this converges. So the point is that if r is greater than 1, then it does converge. Right? That's what we got here. And we don't have, I'm, I'm not really stressing this absolutely business because these terms anyway eventually they become a constant sign. Depending on whether the leading coefficients are positive or negative. So there's no issue of absolute or not absolute. Okay, what happens if r is less than equal to 1 and so, so I should have said 0 less than r less than equal to 1. What happens in this case? Well, we still start here, right? Mm -hmm. But now what happens as x approaches infinity, what does this go to? 1 over x. No, oh, you mean as x approaches infinity. 1 r is what? When 0 less than r less than equal to 1. But if it is 1, it will be just. Okay, yeah. So actually, we actually this requires r not equal to 1, this integration formula we used. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just do 0 less than r less than 1 first. So r is strictly less than 1. In that case, what happens to this integral? Uh, it... 0 less than r less than 1, yeah. What happens to this as x goes to infinity? What does this go to? Goes to infinity. Okay, so that one's just right. Mm -hmm. Now r equals to one. Actually, we have to do it separately because for r equal to one, this integral formula doesn't work. Yeah. So.
But R equal to 1, the integral formula doesn't work. So what, what's the integration method for R equal to 1? That will be natural log of x. So it's ln x. And since we are going to infinity, I have to start from something positive, right? Mm -hmm. So it's ln x from x naught to infinity. And what is this? It's the infinity. Infinity. So at r equal to 1, also it diverges. Okay, so that explains the first two cases here, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't dealt with the condition convergence this session. But it explains the, the at least so far as this. Now, if degree q minus degree p is, is less than equal to zero, which means the numerator and denominator have the same degree, or the numerators actually have a bigger degree, then it's clear that the terms of the series or the integrand, if you're doing this, then it's integrand, if you're doing this in terms of the series, the terms themselves don't go to zero. Right? Yeah. So the integration or the summation cannot converge. Right? Because one of the conditions, necessary conditions for a series to converge is the terms go to zero. Okay? So, so, so this is clear. But, so the only thing we have to concern ourselves with is why is it the case that when the degree difference is greater than zero and less than equal to one, the the signed things, the trigonometric one and the minus one to the k thing, actually converge conditionally. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now it's clear they don't converge absolutely because they converge absolutely, these would also converge. So the main question is why do they converge conditionally? Okay? So let's, let's consider. So the question is why does, we just did the summation first. Why does this summation converge? And again, uh, just for simplicity, I've just considered the simplest example, which is this. Okay? And I'll start K0 as uh, 1, let's say. So this is what, what sum is this explicitly? Negative 1. Mm -hmm. Plus? It goes. It start from one and then what? Yeah, the, the first term, I mean, it's k equal to one to infinity. So, general I know k equals to k naught to infinity, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying k naught is one. So, it starts from one to infinity. The first yeah. term is minus one. The next uh -huh. term is k equals to? One half. Hmm? Negative mm -hmm. one third plus one fourth. Good. Okay. Now we know from the integral test business that 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 if you just took this summation one over k, that doesn't converge, right? Mm -hmm. That's what that's what this thing is telling you. The pure summation doesn't converge. The unsigned summation diverges. But now what I'm claiming is that this summation actually does converge. So this so summation one over k diverges. I'm claiming that this summation, the signed thing, actually does converge. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the signs are oscillating. Alternating and? Mm -hmm. And the absolute value of these terms goes to zero. And one more thing you have to check. And then you can use the theorem which you are thinking of. And the terms are monotonically decreasing. Right? Mm -hmm. The terms are, are the terms are de in decreasing order. They're not going down, up, down, up like that. They're just going down. Terms are decreasing in magnitude. By terms, I mean the things you're adding. And so you can use there's a theorem called the alternating series theorem, which tells you exactly that if you have these three conditions, then by the alternating series theorem, it converges. And the proof of that is a fun one. It just involves your, your sort of hopping on the number line, right? So you have the number line. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a separate video, but just mention. So you go down, up, down, up, down, up. The point is that each time you are, you're sort of moving back, you're reversing your direction, but you're not going back all the way because the terms are going down in, in magnitude. Mm -hmm. Okay, the alternating signs, you keep reversing direction, decreasing magnitude, so you never get back. So you keep making smaller and smaller things. And because the terms go to zero, eventually, you're going to be approaching settling at one. 
So that's why the summation converges. So that's the reason why this converges when the degree difference is 1 or less than 1 but still bigger than 0. So this logic would also work for say summation minus 1 to the k over root k. Same logic would work. Right? Term alternating signs, terms are going to 0, decreasing in magnitude. Now the explanation for this uh, other one is trickier. Hmm? This mm -hmm. one. Uh, but so we will we'll skip over that. I just mentioned it because this is this sort of a similar analog to this. What this is to sum to this, right? Well, the sign summation is the usual summation. Multiplying by a trigonometric function has plays a similar role with respect to the uh, usual integration. You cannot do minus one to the x on a trigno on a integration, right? Because you cannot raise negative numbers to to non-integral power, but you can do this. So this is sort of the 3 is to 1 is like 4 is to 2. That's why I mentioned it. So I won't explain why this converges condition. Okay. So if you're if you're interested in the signed thing, then the degree difference has to be greater than zero. If you're interested in the unsigned thing, the degree difference has to be greater than 